excellent. Nice to see so many of you on on this summer evening and still committed to practice, which is awesome. All right. So onto your back with the feet to the floor, toes pointing forwards, palms facing up. Just let yourself really drop into the ground. And then after a couple of breaths, just see if you can wriggle anything, just to find a little bit more space or comfort into the ground. So just lengthening the spine, lengthen the back of the neck, soften any holding around your face, so your toes, so your fingers. Begin to breathe a little bit more on purpose. Breathing through the nose, if hay fever allows you to. Getting that connection with that intra-abdominal pressure, your IAP. So you're directing your breath so that it moves the lower abdomen. It moves the sides of your rib cage. And it moves into the back of your ribs. The full cylinder of your breath chamber moving. Begin to put more emphasis onto your exhalations so that you feel the belly button draw down to the spine, that Udiana Bandha. Allowing your following inhale to feel a little bit more flushing into the body. Building in an ujjayi sound to your breath, a slight contraction at the back of the throat. So your breath feels audible, your breath feels rooted, you're breathing through the nose, but you feel it in the throat. I'm going to invite you just to bring a gentle pause of your breath. So sink in with me if you can. You're take a big deep inhale, a full IAP breath, and then holding the breath. Then fully exhale. Fully inhale. Hold the breath. Fully exhale. Full inhale, hold the breath, full exhale, really pulling belly down on the end of that exhale. Bring the legs up to 90 degrees, so the knees are stacked above the hips, plan the toes open. Just bring the arms to interlace the fingers around the back of the head, but keep the elbows wide and the head heavy into the hands. Just so your ribs feel a bit more expanded with the elbows out. Take a big breath into the belly. Hold the breath again and pull your lower back to the floor, so almost feel like you're tucking the tailbone. Then exhale to so pull the belly down. Full inhale again. On the holding of the breath, try and tuck the tailbone or pressing the lower back to the floor. Then exhale, pull the abdominals down. Full inhale, this time lift the head and shoulders up to float, elbows reaching high. Hold the breath, pull the belly down. Then exhale, bring your elbows towards the left knee, straighten the right leg forwards, coming into the twisting abs. Inhale, come back to the center. Hold the breath, tuck the tailbone. Exhale, bring your elbows towards the right thigh, straighten the left leg forwards, pulling the belly down. Inhale, come back to the center. Hold the breath, press in the sacrum to the floor. Exhale, elbows to left thigh, straighten the right leg as long as you can, and then squeeze the glutes. Inhale, come back to the center. Holding the breath, pull the back down. Exhale, elbows to right thigh, straighten the left leg. Activate the glutes. Inhale, come back to the center. 
Place the feet to the floor, grab hold of your brick, and then bring the legs back up to 90 degrees. If this is more comfortable, you can do the, um, we're gonna have the brick against one thigh, and you can place that foot to the floor if it's a little bit more comfortable for your back, okay? Otherwise, you work with both feet floating. The brick, initially, or whatever you have is against your left thigh. If you don't have a brick, don't worry about it. Do the arm and leg anyway. So to start with, your left forearm is against the edge of the brick, and the brick is against the left leg, so same arm and leg. Right hand reaching up to the ceiling. Pull the lower back to the floor. So almost feel like you're tucking the tailbone already. Take a big breath in. Holding the breath, press your arm and the leg together. As you exhale, reach that right leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to the center. Hold the breath, press your arm and leg together. Exhale, reach right leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to the center. Bring the block across to the right thigh, the right arm against the brick or your leg, left hand reaching up. Take a big breath in. Holding the breath, pull your back to the floor. Exhale, reaching left leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to the center. Hold the breath, press your arm and leg together. Exhale, reaching left leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Bring the brick against the left thigh, this time with your right arm or wrist against the brick or your leg. The left hand is reaching up to ceiling, so we have opposite arm and leg connection. Take a big breath in. Holding the breath, make sure your back's against the floor and press your arm and leg together. Then exhale, reach the right leg forwards, pulling the belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Hold the breath, bring your back down, press arm and leg together, exhale, reach the right leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center, bring the brick against your right thigh, left arm against the brick or your leg. Right hand reaching up to ceiling, so we have opposite arm to leg. Take a big breath in, holding the breath, press arm and leg, exhale, reaches the left leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Hold the breath, push your arm and leg together. Exhale, reach left leg forwards, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Take the brick down to one side, your feet to the floor, give the knees a little rock side to side. Open the arms out to a T shape along the floor. Let your knees drop over to the right. Just find a twist that feels kind of loosening for your spine, so soft or as deep as you want to take it. You can use the hands to rest on the upper thigh if it helps to anchor them down. Work each exhalation as you bring the belly to spine, that your shoulder on that left side roots closer to the floor. Allow the head to turn towards the left if the neck feels okay with that. Take a really deep breath, that full intra-abdominal pressure from your breath. Gently bring the knees back to the center and find the same twist on the other side. So your legs drop over to the left, reaching that right arm away, turn the gaze if neck feels okay. Rooting the right shoulder down. Take a full deep breath. Inhale, brings the legs back up to the center and in towards your chest. Hug the hands around the shins, so thighs come towards your body. And then take a little rock side to side on your spine, give your ankles a roll around, stretch the toes out. And then take the hands under the fold of the knees, swing the feet backwards and forwards to rock yourself through to seated, straight over the knees and come into all fours. Open the knees slightly wider than the body and then fold the hips back towards heels, coming into the child's pose. Just give your palms a really open stretch against the floor. So stretch the fingers as wide as you can. Keep them nice and wide as you come up into all fours positions, the shoulders above the wrist. Just tuck the knees back in underneath the hips again. So just rocking the weight from hand to hand or gently round in circles, just warming up through the wrists.
Good. And then taking a couple of cat cow rolls through the spine. So your inhale is going to lift the tailbone and lift the chest up. And exhale, rounding through the other way. Inhale to lift you. And exhale, rounding. Just keep that going a couple of times. If you want to swing it side to side or round in circles, anything that feels good, just to loosen your body up, just getting mobile through the body, ready for practice. So we're doing a lot of vinyasas. If you need to take rest through your chaturangas or take rest in child's pose, please take care of what your body needs. When you're ready, tuck the toes, lift the hips up, come to a downward facing dog. Keep a deep squat through the legs. Use the pushing of the arms to get the chest through towards the thighs. Feel that stretch around the shoulders. Let the head dangle. And then paddling through the feet so you find the stretch run through the backs of the legs and through the feet. Think about that tailbone lifting up. And try to find that wrapping of the shoulder blades. We use our serratus around the sides of the shoulders and not the top of the shoulders into your traps. Good, start walking that paddling of your feet up towards your hands so you come into a forward fold at the top of the mat. Keep the feet hips distance if you know you need to keep a bend in the knees in your folds then please do keep that bend in your knees. Take any holding of your arms so maybe hanging them onto elbows or hang onto the back of the legs or let the arms dangle. Again just keep some soft movement through the body so that we find a little bit of loosening up your practice. Let the head go as well. Allow the arms to dangle to the ground. Take a big breath in where you are. As you exhale, keep that soft bend of the knees slowly rolling up. Keep the head and arms heavy until the rest of the spine is straight. Then place the head on top and roll the shoulders down. Just give your head a roll side to side, loosening off through the neck. And then bring the head center. Take an inhale as your arms reach out to the sides and up to the ceiling. You can lace the fingers together and then flip the palms so the palms push up above your head, squeezing the arms in towards the sides of your head. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, reach the hands out in front of you in that clasp. So palms are facing forwards. Little bend in the knees. Push the arms forward so your back curves around. Your gaze comes towards the navel. Okay, take a couple of deep breaths into that upper back. And if you want to keep a little swaying of your body, again, just find that stretch going through the back of the ribs. Any movement that feels good to come into. On your next inhale, reach that clasp of the hands back up to the ceiling again, stretching out the palms. As you exhale, release the fingers, go round through the arms and all the way down to the feet, coming into Uttanasana. Bring the hands into the shins, take a halfway lift, Urdha Uttanasana. Exhale as you fold in and step the right leg back behind you, placing the knee to the floor. Go with a slightly shorter lunge, so you've got more that, that square shaped lunge. Arms lifting up above the head, activating right glute, so we find this stretch through right hip flexor. Sinking pubic bone towards the front heel, keep rooting down through the back foot. And then as you next exhale, think about your front heel and back thigh pulling towards each other. So you find this activation through the hip flexor stretch. Mm -hmm. Keeping the body upright, so your shoulders are stacked above the hips, stacked above that back knee. You take one more deep breath in. As you exhale, bring the hands to the floor, step into plank position. Pressing through the hands, so the shoulder blades feel broad. Pulling belly to spine. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, bring the knees to the floor and the chest to the ground, half chaturanga, looking forwards. Inhale, slide forwards and up to cobra, reaching the toes away. As you exhale, through the knees and back into downward facing dog, hips high. Take a couple of breaths here. Again, any soft movement that feels good through the legs or through the ribs. Bring the gaze to your hands. Bend the knees, step, walk, or hop the feet up to the hands. Take a halfway lift as you inhale, and exhale, fold into the legs. Slowly rolling up to standing, take a big breath in as the arms reach overhead up to the ceiling. Exhale, refolding through to Uttanasana towards the feet. 
halfway lift again as you inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, left leg steps back behind you, place the knee to the floor. Inhale, reach the arms up, this shorter lunge again, pausing here. Activate your left buttock and then sink the hips forward towards front heel. Feel that stretch around the front of your left hip. On your next exhale, have a sense of dragging the front heel and the back thigh towards each other. Keep the shoulders stacked above the hips, stacked above that back knee. Take a really full breath in. Exhale brings you into plank position, pausing there. Find that doming through the upper spine, lower belly pulling in. Big breath in. Exhale, half chaturanga again, so knees and chest to the floor, elbows brush against the ribs. Slide forwards and lift the chest up to cobra, shoulders down. Exhale, back over the knees into your downward dog. Again, taking a couple of deeper breaths here, finding a little bit more stillness without rigidity. So allow the breath to softly move through the ribs and let it move into the body how it organically wants to. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or float the feet up to your hands. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into your legs. Inhale, slowly rolling up the standing arms wide above the head as you rise. As you exhale, bring the thumbs through the crown to the heart center and to the sides of the body, palms facing front. Bring the big toes to touch if they aren't already. Spread the toes open into the floor. So occupy as much of your mat as you can with the soles of your feet. Think about a plumb line dropping from the crown of the head through to the center of the torso and just lengthen the torso up around that. So we've got this nice tall stacked height through the body. Activate the hands a little bit. Maybe close the eyes and just find a deeper sense of the breath. Finding that full connection, that intra-abdominal pressure, IAP, into lower belly, side ribs, back ribs. So the breath is all moving below the shoulders. So the shoulders don't lift up to the ears as you inhale. Keep it more grounded. If you have the eyes closed, reopen them again. Take your inhales and lift your hands up towards the ceiling. Gaze to your thumbs. Exhale, finding forward fold to the feet. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, step the right leg and then the left leg to plank position. Coming through sun A's. Deep inhale. Exhale, half or full chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, come back into downward facing dog. Gonna add a lunge into sun A. So as you inhale, lift the right leg towards the ceiling. As you exhale, step it through to between the hands. Go longer lunge this time. So back knee to the floor. Just taking one breath to lift the arms up. Then as you exhale, sink the hips further forwards and down. Another breath in. The exhale brings you to forward fold at the top of the mat. So big step up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale as you rise, coming all the way to standing, hands up above the head, lifting the gaze. Exhale to refold through to the feet. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, step the left foot, then the right foot to plank position. Take a breath in. Exhale, half or full chaturanga. Inhale, heart open. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath. On your next inhale, lift the left leg up to the ceiling. Exhale, step through to between the hands. Drop the back knee to the floor, long lunge. Inhale, lifting the hands up. Sink the hips forwards as you exhale. Take another deep breath in. Exhale brings you to forward fold. One deep breath out. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, soften into the legs. Inhale as you rise, coming all the way to stand, arms above the head. Come back to that samastiki, so thumbs through the crown, the heart center, palms forwards, just taking that pause between the crowns. Check the big toes are connected and spread the toes open. Find that tall posture again 
and take a deep breath into your body. Another round of sun A without the lunges. So we inhale, lift the palms, gaze to the thumbs. Exhale, forward fold to the feet. Halfway lift as you inhale. Now one long exhale, come all the way to your chaturanga, whether you step or jump, lower down. Inhale, then lift the chest up. Exhale, brings you to downward dog. We're going to pause here for three breaths. So deep breaths. Again, find stillness without rigidity. Allow the breath to softly move through the body, micro bending the knees if that feels good. Loosen off the head. Bring the gaze to your hands. Bend the knees. You can step, walk, jump, or shuffle your feet up to your hands. Halfway lift brings you to uh, inhale and exhale, fold you into the legs. Inhale as you rise, coming all the way up. Coming back, Samaskiki, hands through the crown, heart center, and sides of the body. Check the big toes are touching. Take a deep breath into that tall posture of your body. You'll come into Sun B. So we begin with Utkatasana Chad Rose. Inhale the arms up, the hips low. As you exhale, forward fold, straining the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Long exhale, however you want to get there, come into Chaturanga. Inhale, good. Lift the chest up, draw the shoulder blades back. Exhale, back, back into Downward Dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Your inhale lifts the right leg up. Exhale, step through to between the hands, coming into Warrior One. The back foot is angled and anchored. The arms lift to the ceiling. Again, we're going to pause here on this first Warrior One. So reaching those fingertips up, spread the fingers open so they feel wide. Think about that hip flexor stretch on the left front of the left hip here again. So tailbone dropping down and sink the hips forward towards that front heel. Go nice and long and deep through the legs. Lift the gaze up. Take a really big breath in. Get that back heel anchored to the floor. Exhale, however you want to get there, take your chaturanga. Now, if you're missing chaturangas, you're welcome to hold plank, imagine it, and then come back into meters at downward dog. Good. Next inhale, lift the left leg up. As you exhale, step through, finding that warrior one, left foot forward. So back foot is anchored to the ground. Lifting the fingers up, holding here, sinking hips forwards towards the front heel. Think about hip bones and shoulders, trying to stay facing the top of the mat. The hips will be rotated slightly, but we're aiming to keep them square. Take a really big breath in. Keep breathing out until you've reached your chaturanga. Inhale, then lift the chest up. Exhale, then brings you to downward dog. Three deep breaths. Spread the fingers wide. Let the head relax. Last big breath. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or float the feet up to the hands. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs, make sure big toes are touching. Come into chair pose again, inhaling arms up, hips stay low. Exhale, do stand, samasti here, palms at the sides of the body. Take another round of B with variation. So inhale to chair. Exhale to fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Long exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest, open the lungs. Exhale to downward facing dog. Lift the right leg, inhale. Exhale, step the foot through to between the hands, turn the back foot. Inhale, the arms up, we're gonna pause here. Press the palms together if you can, but keep the gaze forward so there's no strain in the neck. Just hook one thumb over the other thumb so the hands feel connected. As you inhale, straighten up the front leg. Imagine you're being lifted from the fingertips so the whole of your spine is really, really straight and the legs are straightening up. Keep your spine and torso in this posture, but as you exhale, bend back into that right leg again. So you'll feel the hips have to come forwards with you. Inhale to straighten up. 
Exhale, deep bend in that knee again, and come forwards. Once more, inhale to straighten. Exhale, bending into it. Hold the posture in the same posture place, but hinge forwards from the hips. The fingertips are now facing the wall in front of you. More of an arrow lunge. Lean forward into that front leg. Take it into warrior three. So back foot floats up. Keep those arms squeezing around the sides of your head. Back heel in line with the hips. Flex the back foot. And think about the little toe rotating down towards the floor. Keep the hips square to the ground. Pulling in the lower belly. Take out anything in the back bending. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, step the back foot into warrior one again. So float it back down the way you came. Big breath in as you lift the hands. Long exhale all the way through your chaturanga. Any variations you like. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, brings you to downward dog. Take a breath. Inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, step through to between the hands. Virabhadrasana one, arms lifting. Hook one thumb over the other thumb, maybe the other way around, if you can remember which you did. So in your next inhale, straighten up the front leg, straighten your spine. As you exhale, keep the torso straight, but sink back forwards towards front heel. Inhale as you straighten up. Exhale, hinging forwards. You come forwards without back bend. Inhale, straighten up one more. Exhale, hinging in. Keep the arms by your ears. Tip the weight forwards into warrior three. Float the back foot. Good, flex the back foot, rotate that little toe towards the floor so your hip bones are square to the ground, then really pull in through those lower abdominals that we switched on at the start so they support to you without back bending. Slowly float the back foot down again, you're coming back into warrior one with a big breath in at the top and a long breath out as you come through your chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest, open the lungs. Exhale, back into downward facing dog. Take three deep breaths, inhaling one. Exhale. Inhaling two. Exhale. Inhaling three. Exhale. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or jump the feet up to your hands. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Coming back into the chair pose, feet bend to the knees with the hands. Exhale, brings you to stand, hands to heart center and to the sides of the body. Pausing here, spread the toes, deepen and ground your breath. Coming through another variation of Sun B. So again, starting with chair pose, deep bend in the knees, lift the hands, press the knees together. Exhale, finding forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Long exhale to Chaturanga. Again, if you wanna just imagine the Chaturanga, full plank, wait for the vinyasa to lead, and meet back in downward dog. Otherwise, you can keep rolling through, it's good. So from downward dog, lift the right leg up, take a big breath in. Exhale, step through to between the hands, coming into warrior one again, so back heel is grounded, lift the arms up. This time rotate round right into warrior two, so you're gonna shift the hips and shoulders to face the long side of the mat. Left hand to thigh, right hand reaching up and over, reversing the warrior. Again, try to keep out any feeling of back bend. So using that strength of the lower core to lift belly button to spine and drop the tailbone towards the ground. Lifting the gaze towards the fold of your top elbow if neck feels okay. And like we did in Warrior One, you're going to inhale to straighten the front leg. As you exhale, keep everything else as it is, just deepen back into that front knee. Inhale again to straighten, reaching through these right fingers. Exhale, deepen back into the right knee. Last one, inhale to straighten. 
Exhale to bend, bring the body back up straight through warrior two, and then take the right hand to the floor onto a block if you want to. It's going to be in front of the right toes, coming into Ardha Chandrasana, lifting the back foot, half moon. So again, like your warrior three, the hip, so the heel is in line with your hip. This time the hip bones are facing the side of the room rather than down to the floor. Your balance is easier if your drishti gaze is low. The higher you take the drishti, the more it's going to challenge balance. Just so seeing if we can lift the gaze towards top thumb if you're feeling brave. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, left hand to the floor, square the hips up. So you're turning into the supporting leg. And see if you can lift that floating foot up any higher. Good. Those of you that can or feel steady here, bring the right hand around the back of that right calf and use that to encourage the body closer to the leg, which is going to help your top leg lift up a little bit higher. Good. It doesn't matter how high that top leg is, but keep it really straight. So even if it's pointing towards the floor, push it out towards the floor. So stay straight and strong. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, come back into plank position. So step down, step back. Take a breath in and plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, lift left foot high. Exhale, step through to between the hands. Coming into warrior one, facing the front. Exhale into warrior two, facing side. So just check in warrior two, your front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Rest the right hand to the thigh, left hand flipping up and over, reversing your warrior. Good. Uh, Kerry, go the other way. Yeah. The uh, left hand to your left leg, sorry, right hand to your right leg, left hand overhead. That's it. Lift the gaze if we can, so leaning back towards the right. Straighten up the left leg, take a big breath in. Yeah, that's it. Exhale, then deepen back into that left knee. Inhale to straighten up. Exhale, bend back in. Inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend, keep the legs as they are, bring the body back up again. Left hand comes all the way to the floor in front of the left toes, and then take the weight forwards to come into half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So kick the back heel in line with the hips, no higher at the moment. Flex the floating foot, so again, keep the legs straight and strong, so it will stay easier connected with the core. Good. Take a breath in, lift the gaze if we can. As you exhale, bring the right hand to the floor so your hips square up to the ground. And see if you can lift that right foot any higher. So again, keep it straight wherever it is. Maybe your left hand can just hold onto the left calf muscle and then using that to encourage the body closer to your front leg as your top leg tops up a little bit higher. Nice, make sure you're still breathing. On your exhale, step it all the way back into plank position, holding this. Take a breath in. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward dog. Three deep breaths in stillness without rigidity. Two more breaths. Last full breath. Bring the gaze to your hands. Bend the knees to step, walk or hop the feet up to the hands. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Come back into chair pose. Deep bend in the knees, lift the hands. Exhale, samastihi, standing pose. Hands at the side of the body. Make sure the big toes are touching. Take a deep breath. Next series of Sun B. So starting again with chair pose. Inhale, lift the hands, take the hips. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga. 
Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward dog. Right foot lifts up, take a breath in. Exhale, step through to between the hands, warrior one. Inhale, lift the arms up. Warrior two again as you exhale and turn hips and shoulders to the side. This time, straight up the front leg. Exhale, reach the hands forwards, coming into Trikonasana. Hand underneath can rest to the shin or the ankle or a brick or finding the crease fingers around the big toe. See if you can imagine your torso being lengthened from the rib cage forwards. So rather than hinging down towards the leg, try and keep the spine parallel to the floor. Imagine you can tuck the tailbone. So you tuck in your bum and lean the chest back. Again, coming into that half moon again, so soften the bend in the front knee and hop the weight forwards into the front foot. Keep the hip bones square to the side. I know we all love half moon. Good, if you want to, bring the bind in. So you're going to bend the top knee and grab hold of the top foot. A little cheat with that one, bring the knee, knee towards your chest first and then open it out again. Yeah, that's a left hand to left foot angle. Go try and keep the hips square to the side. Don't overthink it. Let's open the leg back out again. Find the foot back to the floor. So you're in pyramid pose. So all of the toes are facing the top of the mats on parallel lines. So your feet are on train tracks. You're going to bring your left hand again if you have a book or a brick. It's sometimes easier to place that left hand on a object to the outer side of your front foot. The right hand onto the lower back and turn the shoulders towards the right side of your mat. So you're, you're twisting in towards that front leg. Good, if you feel steady, take the top hand to the ceiling. Yeah, good, it's a wobbly one and a strong IT band stretch. Looking good, take a big breath in. Exhale, unravel your twist. So come back through pyramid. Keep the front foot as it is. You're coming back into your warrior two legs. So this back foot's going to hop a little bit further away and spin the arms back open. Place this time your right hand to the floor on the inside of the front foot. So extended side angle. Left arm overhead. So create a long sweeping line from your top fingertips through to your back heel. So if you feel like your bum is sticking up a little bit, try and sink the hips forwards towards your front foot. Good. And then feel tucking the tailbone so you tuck your bum in. You can pause here for a few breaths if this feels enough. Otherwise, maybe a bind, so your top hand comes over the lower back and your right hand goes under the thigh to grab hold of that left hand. See how it goes. Good, if you have the bind, try and turn the chest out towards the side, almost up towards the ceiling, so you're not looking down to the floor. Look out to the side or up. Again, you can pause here for a few breaths. If you want to build it into your bird of paradise, your back foot is going to hop up to the top of the mat, keep the leg bound. From there, you lift the bound leg up. Before you try and straighten this floating leg that you have bound, think about straightening the supporting leg and your back. Or we'll turn to the side. So you have the bound leg. If then you're straight, then you straighten that leg up. <laughs> Lots of dancing birds of paradise on the screen. I love that. Slowly reverse the way you came, like nothing happens. So place the back foot down, float the left foot back, unravel the arms back into warrior two. And if you forgot to breathe for a moment, then take a really deep breath. As you exhale, spiral the hands to the floor, listen up, step the back foot to the top of the mat, and then take the feet as wide as your mat. Deep bend in the knees, come into a squat. Good. Elbows to the inside of the knees. So use the tip of your elbows, not your shoulders. Okay, so here we can create more lift up through the spine. So rather than hunching, stay straight. Press the hands together at the heart center so you feel quite proud through it, even though your hips maybe not feeling so proud here. Take a couple of deep breaths, a little bit of movement into it if we need to. Kind of not done too much hip opening this evening. So let it feel like it needs a bit of breath and breathe into it. 
So from here, we're going to roll through a vinyasa. If you want to take arm balance and do bakasana first, then slide the knees towards your shoulders, take the weight forwards, and see if you can hop the toes off the floor towards your bum. Play around with it for a few breaths. And then step or hop your way back into your chaturanga. Yeah, lift the chest up, keep rolling through that vinyasa. We meet back in downward dog for the other side. Let's pause here in down dog, Let's take a couple of breaths. We will meet next. On your next inhale, lift the left leg high, big breath in. Exhale, steps you through to between the hands, coming into warrior one. Lift the hands up. Exhale into warrior two, turn the hips and shoulders around. So from here, get the body as it is, straighten up the front leg, take a big breath in. Exhale, reach forwards and then hinge the body down. So two straight legs, the underneath hand resting to shin or ankle or your big toe. You're in this triangle shape. Again, just be, try to, um, if you need to bring the hand further up, then totally bring the hand further up. It's better that your spine feels parallel with the floor, as though you're being pulled from that plumb line at the crown of the head to the tailbone. Good. Tuck in your bum, lean the chest back, that you're being squashed between two panes of glass. Coming back into that half moon, so gaze to the floor, left hand hops forwards, and taking the weight onto that front foot, heel lifting. Good. Yeah, the balance will come. Play with it. If you want to play around with the bind, then bend the floating legs. So your right hand is going to grab the foot or the ankle and pull it back. So push the foot into your hand so you create an open line through the front of the body. A deep pose. Well done. Make sure you breathe wherever you are. And laugh at yourself if you fall. <laughs> Don't take it too seriously. Lengthen the back leg. Set the foot down. You're coming into pyramid pose. So the back foot is resting to the floor. All toes facing forwards. Folding forehead into shin. Again, if you know you're taking care of your lower back, keep a little bend in that front knee. Then we revolve that trikonasana. So your right hand is going to come to the outer side of your front foot. Again, on a block or a book is easier here. Your left hand on the lower back and then spin the shoulders around into that twist towards the front leg. Try to find the point where your back heel is still pressing into the floor. So you can adjust where that foot is if you need to. If you're feeling steady, lift the left arm up. Maybe lift the gaze up and still try and breathe at the same time. Good, nice, really bring that arm back down again, unravel your twist, step that back foot a little bit further out, coming back into your warrior two, so spin the arms back open again, and then we find extended side angles. So your left hand comes down to the floor on the inside of the foot, so your knee and your shoulder press together, so deep bend in that front leg. Right arm overhead, bicep to ear. Good, so again, try to feel that long straight line, extended side angle through your right fingertips through to that back heel. So it might mean you need to go longer through the legs or sink the hips further forwards towards your front heel. So get this straight diagonal line through the body. Good, you can stay here if you want to or you build in the half bind, top arm wraps behind your lower back. Full bind, your underneath arm goes under, so your left hand is holding the right wrist, and then use that to try and bring the chest to open out. Yeah, you can stay here if this feels enough, if you can stay here for a few breaths and I applaud you, or you can bring your bird of paradise to your back foot, you're going to hop or shuffle up to the front, and you're going to lift up that bound leg, so strong supporting leg to lift you. Good, so before you work on straightening this held leg, try and straighten that supporting one, try and straighten up the spine. Good, Is he then try and lengthen the toes, so push your leg into the arm to lengthen it. Beautiful. Slowly reversing the way you came. If you're still holding that bind, then well done, your thighs will be on fire. Float it back, 
unravel the arms back into warrior two, take a humongous gigantic breath. We're gonna spiral the arms to the floor and come back into your crow, oh, sorry, your squat pose, so your back foot to the top of the mat and sink the hips down. Elbows to the inside of the knees, straighten up the posture. From here, stay as you are, I'll just turn so you can see, your right hand is gonna come in front of the right toes, so your arm and leg are connected on that right side. The left arm is gonna lift up to the ceiling. Lift the gaze towards that left hand. Take a deep breath. Sometimes this feels really awkward, I'm not quite open in it. As you next exhale, place the left hand down in front of the left toes. The right arm is gonna lift up to the ceiling. Use the arm and that knee to press together to help the ribs spiral, lift the gaze. Take a deep breath. On your exhale, bring the hand to the floor. Keep the knees by the shoulders, hands to the mat, lift the hips up. Transfer the weight forwards into the hands. And again, see if you can play around with that crow pose. Give just one for this. Good, if you're floating, bring the big toes to touch and try and bring their feet up towards your bum a little bit. Tuck them in, Bernard, that was great. Good, ready, steady. Hop, step or jump back into your chaturanga. <laughs> Good, and then lead through the vinyasa, back into your downward dog. Take a deep breath in through your nose, and a sigh through your mouth. Inhale again through your nose, sigh through the mouth. Bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, step, walk or float the feet up to the hands. Take a halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold into the legs. Back into chair pose as you inhale, arms up. Exhale, brings you to standing, hands to the sides of the body. Take a deep breath. Just gonna work on a few standing postures. So take the weight into your left foot, bring the right knee towards your chest. The hands are gonna come around the back of your thighs. So interlace the fingers together and scoop the thigh towards your body. Try to keep the shoulders back. With this leg bent, hold here. Really try and straighten up through the supporting leg and the posture. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, flex the foot and kick it out through the heels so the leg straightens. You can push the leg into your hands. Inhale, bend the knee again. Exhale, straighten up, both legs are straight. One more, inhale to bend. Exhale to straighten. Bend the knee again, and then bring this leg into your tree pose. So you're gonna open the knee out and place sole of the foot against the inner thigh, hands to heart center. See any variation of tree is fine. If you wanna bring the foot lower or to the floor, that still counts. You're gonna lift the arms towards the ceiling. Either palms stay connected, you can hook the thumbs like we did in the earlier sequencing. Try to straighten out the spine, so really tempting with this um, turn out of the hip to kind of sit into your lower back. Try and scoop the tailbone down, holding in through your bandhas. Lean your body towards the right, towards that bent knee. Holding the balance. Inhale, straighten back up again. A little bit harder, see if you can lean the body towards the left, away from that knee. Yeah, good. Inhale, come back to center. Release the hands, and then use your right hand just to place this ankle onto the left thigh. So left leg is back in that chair pose with a squat. The hands come up to the heart center. Flex this foot that's floating, and then stick the tailbone back behind you, so you get a stretch through your right glutes. Reach the arms out in front. So holding here, if you know this feels enough for you or you're taking care of your backwards twisting, option to bring your right 
So bring the palms together into prayer and the right forearm against the sole of the foot. So they press together. Then see if you can open the hands out so your left arm opens out up to the ceiling. Good. You can up level from here to so just slide that foot up a little bit more towards the upper arm into the tricep so your right fingertips might rest into the floor. So squat deeper in. Try forearm or upper arm against the foot. Good. Bring the palms back together. Reversing the way you came. So lift the hands to heart center. Sliding that right leg, we're still on the same balance, into eagle. So close the leg, toes to the floor, or toes off, or toes wrap. Reach the arms out in front of you. Your right arm goes over the left arm. Back of the hands together. Wrap them again if you can. Reach the elbows forwards and up. Sink into that burning leg. Take a breath. As you inhale, unravel with flourish, sweep the arms up to the ceiling, lift the knee, and step it down to Samasthi. Oh, shake out the supporting leg if you need to. Wow. Okay, the other side. <laughs> Yay. So weight into your right foot, spread the toes open, bring the left knee towards your chest, and the hands interlace around the back of that thigh. So feel nice and strong and tall through this supporting leg. Belly pulling in, shoulders drawing back, really tall through the posture. Take a breath in. As you exhale, push the thigh into the hands, reach the heel forwards, keep the posture. Inhale, bend the knee. Exhale, reach the heel forwards. Inhale, bend the knee. Last one, exhale, reach the heel forwards, pull belly to spine. Inhale, bend the knee, coming into Prakshasana, your tree pose, sole of the foot against the inner thigh. Again, just make sure the spine feels nice and tall, palms to the heart center. Find a drishti spot, your gaze spot, something steady. Inhale, lift the hands to the ceiling. Maybe hook the thumbs as we did in the earlier sequencing. As you exhale, lean the body towards the left, towards the bent knee. And just check you're not back bending into it. Stay strong through the glutes. Good stuff. Nice. Inhale through the center. Exhale, lean towards the right, away from that bent knee. Awesome. Inhale through the center. Bring the hands to heart. Use your left hand to just place that ankle onto the right thigh and then sitting into the pose. Reach the sit bones towards the back of your mat so you find a stretch around your left glute. Flexing the foot. You can stay here if it's enough or reach the hands forwards, palms stay together and then you can place the left forearm into the sole of the foot. Maybe opening the right hand up so in the twist. For those of you that can go a little bit deeper, try and slide the tricep into the foot. So your left fingertips are resting against the ground in that twist. So deep, deep stretch to that hip. Good, don't worry if you've lost the will to live. <laughs> Good, slowly reverse the way you came. Hands to heart center. Um, oh no, into eagles. So left leg over, we're not even done yet. Toes to the floor, toes pick up or toes wrap. Arms out in front of you. You have the left arm over the right. Wrap the arms around. Reach the elbows forwards. Lift them up. Find the space around the shoulder blades. Take a really deep breath. Slowly inhale. Ramble the arms up. Lift the knee. As you exhale, forward fold through to the feet. Keep a soft bend in the knees. Just hang out here for a couple of breaths. Let the body sway. Take a deep bend into the knees and then slip the hips all the way down to the floor. Lengthen the legs out in front of you. Take an inhale as the arms lift up. You're taking just a fold. So if you again need to take a bend into the knees, please do. Just let the body roll over the legs. Good. Take 
Tipping the sit bones towards the back of the mat. Flexing the feet, keep the legs parallel. So just check the knees aren't turning in or turning out. Knees are facing the ceiling. Let the head relax. Slowly unravel the spine. Roll yourself all the way down onto your back. So shuffle yourself if you need to. Bring the knees into your chest once you're on the ground. Take a little rock side to side. Open the arms out to the sides of the mats. Come into a twist of any variation. So if you want to keep it soft for your back, let the feet find the floor first and let the knees tip over. You want to take it a little bit deeper, you can hook the eagle legs again. So the left leg wrapping around the right and drop the knees over to the right. Or anywhere in between. Like we did at the start of the practice in this twist, keeping that left shoulder rooting to the floor. Maybe the head turns. If you then deepen the connection to your breath into the body. Very slowly, if you have the raveling of your legs, then use the core to help you bring the knees up. Switching sides with whatever variation you wish to take. Aiming to keep that right shoulder rooted and the breath super connected. Slowly bring the legs back center and bring yourself into any variation of a Shavasana. So whether that's feet staying on the floor or legs and arms out flat, so you can bring your feet up a wall if you wish to, wherever you want to be. Just take a minute, it's somewhere comfy. Without it feeling forced or um, held too much, just find a gentle holding of the breath between the inhale and exhale. Just a very slight pause, just to help slow the rhythm down of your breath again. Softening the muscles around the face. Any holding around the limbs or your back. Keeping the eyelids softly closed, but just lift the focus point to the center of the forehead. Feel how that relaxes the eyes. lightens any tension from the face. Becoming aware of that gentle sense of energy in your body. Maybe you notice it as a warmth or a sense of humming. That flush of circulation, that flush of prana moving through the system. Whenever you next inhale, reach the arms back behind you, lengthen the legs away from you, find a full body stretch out. Take a moment to wriggle into it or to take a yawn or a big sigh.
bending the knees so the feet find the ground and then roll yourself over to one side just holding that on your side for a moment and then use the hands to help you press yourself into any comfortable seated posture to close your practice bringing yourself upright keeping the eyes softly closed once you're settled with the backs of the hands to the legs palms open connecting the index finger to the thumb in gyan mudra keeping that softness around the muscles of the face that sense of lift through the posture and as always i'll just invite you to close your practice this evening bringing to mind just one thing that you can feel grateful for today. Acknowledge something positive about yourself. And recognize how getting to a yoga practice has served you in some way today. Closing that gratitude, self-compassion and achievements to your heart center as you bring the palms together at the heart space. Let's take a really deep breath in. And as you exhale, bow your head to your hands. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Pippa. You're so welcome. See you joining us soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>